Hey guys, Cam315, back at it with another video for you guys, and I'm back with another My Hero Academia manga chapter review for you guys. As uh, we continue on with this story, and seemingly enough, it seems like we're getting the setup to potentially the final battle. Hopefully I'm saying that for the case for now, the final battle, but you know, that's kind of the theme and everything, but uh, yeah, um, I'm liking where the story's going. It's gonna be interesting to see how the, this series ends and things like that, but uh, you know, that's kind of thing. So anyways, um, this is My Hero Academia um, manga chapter 379 titled Hopes. Uh, we get like a cover art page of La Brava in Gentle Criminal. So, yes. Anyways, um, we get a flashback to start off the chapter, and it actually involves in Lady Nagant. Now, obviously the thing is, how did Lady Nagant show up? Kind of the thing. Well, that's kind of explained here. Now, Lady Nagant, who is pretty much wrapped up in bandages, she is barely even standing right now. And you have this doctor, well, Dr. Mario, uh, he looks like Dr. Mario. He's pretty much telling the gaunt, you need to stay put. If you try to move any further, your wounds are going to open up again and the bandages are going to fall off and you're just going to, you're just making your situation worse. But Nagant is like, you need to tell me where the bad guy is. You need to tell me where the enemy is and everything. Um, now, Dr. Mario is like, I can't tell a freaking convict, you know, about, you know, what's going on. Now, she goes on to say, Izuku Midoriya asked me to do this. And that was in the flashback to their fight when um, Deku asked Lady Nagant to fight on their side, fight on the hero side. Um, and she feels like it's within her will to fight alongside his side. Um, now, Rock Lot comes on and he's like telling the doctor, he's like, listen, I'll take full responsibility for whatever happens and everything like that. He gives this device to Lady Nagant and he's like, here, this is all the information you need to know about what's going on, what the hell is um, the update and the status of this fight and everything, you know, UA's positions, enemy stuff, simple things like that. Um, now he goes to say, listen to Lady Nagant, ultimately this full mobilization on our part hinges on our faith in Izuku Midoriya. So we cut back to the present. Lady Nagant fires off the first shot, and we just see just blood splatter all over her. Like, just the recoil of one shot manages- looks like it seems like it opens up those wounds again. And everything. So, um... Yeah, we continue on. Rock- you know, one of Rock last dialogues, so if your heart's telling you to take action for that kid, then I'm choosing to trust you. Now. Lady Nagant goes on to say, I still got one more shot, and every single one counts. Um, she goes on to say, I've been stained by darkness and lost faith in the light, until you and my successor came around to remind me, which is in reference, she's talking about Deku and Hawks, I'm right then and there. She goes on to say, of how I felt back then, with my bright and shining hopes, and of my reason for being, uh, and my re- and my reason um, for being. Uh, now let this reach Izuku Midoriya from Lady Nagant. She shoots a second shot and it looks like, and Shigaraki's going in to try to decay with his other hand, which I believe is his left hand. He ends up getting shot as well. Deku picks this up. He gets a little bit of a smile because he knows it's Lady Nagant helping him out and everything. Now, in the meantime, we get a vestige scene with All for One and Shigaraki. Now, now, all for one, he's pretty much pissed off that Lady Nagant is assisting Deku. He goes on to literally say that disposable trash. After murdering her fellow hero, she plays the victim like some of the like the um like um some noble agent of justice. She's a pathetic pushover, drifting whichever way um the wind blows. Um. And she go, and then all of a sudden we get this horrific imaging of all these fingers coming out of all for one's mouth, bro. It, it's honestly kind of grotesque, um, and everything. Now, um, we hear this other voice say, "Ha ha ha!" Manipulating her emotions in history didn't work, huh? Yeesh! Look at you now. That's what you get for sticking your hands where they don't belong. The same goes for the way you groomed me. 
using Shimura, um, Shimura and All Might to push my buttons like that. It's later revealed that that is actually Shigaraki talking. So Shigaraki is pretty much making fun of all for one. He's like, <laughs> oh, your predictions haven't been going so good, master. Your, your, <laughs> your planning is all getting screwed up. You tried to use me like you tried to use her. Wow, very interesting. He goes on with his statement saying, all to move ahead with your plot to hijack my body and soul. Because remember guys, it's very interesting. I think I made a mention of this in one of my previous manga chapter reviews. I don't go back and rewatch them sometimes. Maybe I, do, maybe I might need to start doing that so I can recall what I predict. But I did say, I think I did tell myself, I think I did say on the channel that maybe a reason why all for one is trying to go bring his original body to Shigaraki is he's maybe trying to fuse his original body with Shigaraki's body so he can have complete and utter dominance of control over Shigaraki's body so then Shigaraki has absolutely nothing left and pretty much in a way it's kind of like all for one reincarnates himself and he can practically live on a more more than a few more thousands of years or however long with with a much stronger better body than his original so yeah Shigaraki goes on to say to make use of my burning rage to take one for all for yourself so he's pretty much saying please you're trying to hijack my body to use the rage i built up over time and the power and potential i have so all you can do is steal one quirk he goes on to say i got blended into this mix and became part of you but guess what, Master? I wasn't fan. I, I wasn't a fan of the scheme, so I hid my own core deep down in my soul. But bit by bit, without you noticing, I started reclaiming myself from the inside out, helping my origin follow that path. So practically, Shigaraki said, "I knew what you were up to. So you know what I'm going to do? I'll let you take over my body. I'll let you think that you won." But in reality, I've pushed myself to the deepest, darkest parts of my core, where you couldn't find me. And bit by bit, day by day, I slowly but surely was fighting to get control back of my body. And of course, I will be doing that right now, because I want to do what I want to do. Which, this plays into this whole, ad, this whole thing with All For One, being very overconfident. Um... Again, no no disrespect to the person if that person is watching this video today or whenever. We had a nice discussion. I disagree with that person's points. Um, you know, if you want to go check out that thread, go check out the thread in the last manga chapter review. You may agree with that person. You may agree on my side. Um, you know, the whole thing that one of the points that person made was the fact how could all for one not see this coming? How could he not put the steps in place? Um for you know stopping the heroes how could he not understand some of his more detriments simple one the guy was in prison for a majority part of this season and two again you know I uh, now that i can actually speak on this for example he made a mention about you know not predict not about aizawa how could he not see aizawa would be a pretty detrimental threat to him well, because he never foreshadowed Aizawa being a freaking potential threat because especially if he was still out running wild in his original body, he could take down Aizawa with utter ease whether he had no quirks or even if he did have quirks. He would have been able to take Aizawa out with the snap of his finger. That's how he, that's how All For One thinks so lowly of it. Here, any other heroes, even All Might to an, to an extent, that's how much he thinks of. Plus, he's very overconfident in him. He's very overconfident. You have to think that All For One was a dude that was ruling the beginning ages of Quirk society, practically. So, of course, this guy's going to have this like type of persona that he's over... Uh, the fact that, well, if I ruled before, I can definitely rule the times again. You know, and again, to that person, you know, yes, person makes some decent points, but I disagree with those points. All for one, not predicting, oh, well, Hawks could get in the way. Aizawa could get in the way. No, 
The reason why is he's overconfident. Second of all, he was in jail for majority of this series. Majority of this series. So how could he be prepared for Aizawa or Hawks? He, he wouldn't know. Yes, he tried to go, and mind you, he actually tried to go after Aizawa to make him into Kuragiri other than freaking um, Shirokumo, but he got Shirokumo, not Aizawa. So if that plan failed, and he just moved on to the next thing, and he didn't really have a care for what Aizawa did, because he knows, well, it doesn't matter, I could kill Aizawa with the, with the speck of my finger anyways. You know, and then uh, it goes into this whole overconfidence thing, because after he breaks out, he knows that Oh, Shigaraki got my quirk. I can try to take over his body. He got so overconfident that he had thought he had won that he didn't prepare for the worst case scenario. And sometimes when you're an overconfident person, you don't really predict. You don't really see certain things incoming. And they might actually be a shock to you. Um, and that's what happened all for one. He got a little bit overconfident, a little bit cocky, thinking that he was going to take over Shigaraki's body like that. And now his entire plan is going up in smoke and he's losing, um, which it's honestly quite funny and everything. Now, all for one calls over Kuragiri um, to transport Shigaraki to the Gunga Mountain Villa area to, so he can be met side by side with his original body. We know why. He probably wants to fuse his original body with Shigaraki's body to assume complete dominance over it and have complete control and everything. Now, the thing is, Kuragiri's actually fighting back, and he's like, ah, oh, shit, shit, and he goes on to pretty much say, I am the protector of Shigaraki, have to. Now, the interesting thing um, in this um, panel of Kuragiri, we do again see a slight, very slight tracing of Shirokumo in there. Don't know what that's supposed to mean, but... There's a little bit of Shirakuma we see right then and there in Kuragiri. So maybe that's kind of the thing there. And we even, we even see a full thing. Uh, now he goes and say, who, where, she, friend, something like that. It's just, it's interesting to see where that's going and everything. Um, so yeah, Shigaraki goes and say, I got no need for all one for all. Do you think you had everything under control? So practically Shigaraki's like, I do not freaking care about one for all at this point. I just care about my motivations, about destroying everything. Um, we see, um, one, we see Nagant, looks like she's down for the count. Don't know if she's dead, but Shigaraki goes on to say, unlike those flip-flopping screw-ups, my heart ain't wavering. Everything I witness um, in this world of ours led to this existence of that house. Pretty much saying, my whole motivation, my whole reasons for doing what I'm doing goes back to that freaking house I used to live in. Get a crazy panel where you just see Shigaraki breaking through and everything. And he goes and say, as Tomura Shigaraki and Tenko Shimura, I've got just one hope. The destruction of everything stemming from that house. Shigaraki is back. You know, he, this is legit Shigaraki. Um, his hair is a lot shorter now. It's back to what we see of old school Shigaragi. So everybody I know and their mama was happy. They're like, oh, thank God. There is no all for Shigaraki. This is legit Shigaraki. So Shigaraki's back. Next panel, we get a full page spread. Um, and it's Deku giving a headbutt to Shigaraki. And Shigaraki goes and says, that's the only thing that's going to save me, hero. Um, now, Deku literally zoomed in. You know, he heads but Shigaraki. They're falling out of the sky from UA. So they're, the battle's changing and everything. Um, you have it to where you... You you, you have it to where um, Gentle Criminal's like, Boy, is that you? And everything now. Deku goes and say, No, the Shigaraki's got his quirks back. I can't afford to fight atop that tomb. Um, and all the other people are like, What the heck? And everything. I can't let... Now, Deku ends off the chapter saying, I can't let you do that. But still, I also can't pretend... I didn't see you crying in there. And the last um, the last um, panel of the chapter is another full spread chapter. And it looks like we're being set up for the final, final battle between Deku and Shigaraki. They're fighting in like a ruined city area type of thing. Um, Shigaraki is looking ominous. All you see is his face is blacked out. Eyes all lit up. 
You just have Deku practically, you know, up against Shigaraki. He's got Black Whip around his um his his um hand, so he can't you try to use Decay and everything. And uh, seemingly enough, it looks like we're being set up for full power Deku versus full power Shigaraki. Um, and that final battle will be commencing. Um, so yeah, there is no break, um, but they're gonna be fighting, and it's gonna be interesting to see how this goes. Again, really, the only two major battles that we got left going on are this, you know, the things, the battles that are going on with Gunga Mountain, and then obviously this fight. Um, so we're definitely gonna see where the story goes, but another solid chapter of My Hero Academia. Definitely intrigued to see where it goes, but um, yeah, um, solid, solid enough. Uh, Shigaraki's now back in control of his body. Uh, he over he outlasts the overconfidence of all for one, and right now we got our main setup for the potential final fight. Um, but really nothing else to say um, about this chapter. But yeah, but if you guys like the video, leave a like. Put in the comment section your thoughts on this week's chapter. Again, if you want to leave a comment and everything about your thoughts and things like that, please do. Um, I'll probably respond and give my take of the two cents. But again. It's an open forum just because you know i disagree with a point doesn't mean i don't think it is and again i apologize to that one person i was calling that person a hater because the thing but you know that's kind of the, that's just it just didn't sound right to me but you know the more we talked hey we had a nice peaceful interaction and things like that so uh yes on that person i formally if you're watching this video i formally apologize for calling you a hater because i see that you do like this story and everything we just have our own takes on where the story's gonna go but um anyways that's kind of it hit that subscribe button if you want to get more my hero academia content whether it is the anime or the manga or anything else to do with my hero academia um hit the subscribe button and things like that but till then guys catch you guys next video and have a great rest of your sunday or whatever day you check this video peace